have you ever had like oh. a bottle of Coke? Yes. Yeah. Have you never yeah. had a bottle of Coke? Yeah, okay, I'm, so you've gotten a bottle of Coke. Have you had yeah. like the one liter ones? Sure. Have you had the yeah, one liter ones? Think, First yeah, off, I, great size of a pop, right? Yes. It fits it better. Is, it fits it better than like, <laughs> it is the best. Yeah. It, because it's still tall like it. It has the aesthetic, but it also fits in your hand. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Dude, is that not weird you, though? You put a voice to something I've always felt. You know. <laughs> you did those know. Dr Pepper one liters, dude. Yep. It's perfect. It's just there's it's something where it's like because there's something about a slim <laughs> bottle that you can put to your lips. Yep. I don't know what it is, but anyways, that has nothing to do with yep, it. You're right. Thank you. I'm so happy you agree with me You're on that so too. So on about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where I was going. Guys. Let's start the episode, then we can get into this. Sorry. Yeah. He's gonna do it for us. Oh, what's <laughs> <laughs> what's the intro? Is there? I knew I should have prepared more. Just well, I don't know how you would have prepared for that. Just I say, just say, welcome to Casting Light. My welcome to Casting Light, a podcast by Guiding Light. A podcast by Guiding Light. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Justin Shans. <laughs> and who's this? And this is Debbie Joe. And this is Daniel Irwin. I don't know your last name. Who's That's that? Okay. that? No, no one does. does. <laughs> <laughs> no, my last name. Who's who's know. who's that? Doug Pansy. Hi. We're here for a good time, not a long time. Are you? Quizzing? I'd like to try that again. <laughs> yeah, do it. Don't do it up. What's your name, or what's your last name? <laughs> she doesn't. She. You're not gonna get. You, it I can her. say we don't. I don't know if it's like an anonymous name. You can say my last name. She's just not gonna tell you. Okay. Oh, I gotcha. Mean, I, I'm not against it. She's a real bitch. <laughs> Are you recording still? <laughs> yeah. No, he that's never so. We're recording. started. So. Uh, oh, we're going. We, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what about social media? Were you going to yeah, talk about? Yeah. Do you do you do you have social media? I kind of yes, I do. To answer that straightforward, and I kind of <laughs> I struggle. I kind of struggle with it. You know, like it. It's just one of those things where it's like, do I do? I was talking to Doug about it. Like, do I really need this in my life? You know. Um, are you a TikTok guy? Oh no, I cannot do TikTok. No. <laughs> what. Are you at Instagram? I do Instagram and Twitter. Oh gosh, oh. I do not promote it. I will not. I will not give out any. Of I know my, it's bad for you. I'm right. just saying I do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The only I, nice thing about Twitter is that anytime there's like a Spotify outage or something, if, when I Google what's happening with Spotify, the Spotify Twitter shows up on Google and says we're working on it, and then I know a, it's real. There's and Spotify it's not just outages. My, yeah. It's happened a couple Spotify? times this year. Outages? Do you know who yeah. owns Spotify? No. Neither do I. Okay. I had a podcast <laughs> down there for a little while and I canceled it. What was it about? Uh, it was kind of a, it was random. I would, it was mostly about like recovery and my faith journey. And then I would talk a little bit about like politics and. Well, you are on Twitter, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's exactly why that I hate it. That is the Twitter like, I don't need all this crap. It is interesting. It's addicting, though. It is. And it's... Let's not beat around the bush. (laughs) There's a dopamine hit from the doom scroll. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like... Well, that... We're we're all these dopamine-addled, like, freaks now. (laughs) Riddled. (laughs) Everything is so different. I can't concentrate on anything anymore. Yeah. You know? Right. From just from just the oversaturation of just like, oh, this thing that I can move my finger. I can yeah, get you're really living that effect right now, though, because you have a choice in the matter. Yeah. Well, right. I'm just saying the reality. I'm not really choosing one thing or the other, you know. Mm. Mm. It's just true. saying the reality of where I'm at right now, you know. That's fair. Hey, yeah. I'm... I try to stay... You. Fair in my criticisms, though. It's like, you know, is is there anything good I'm getting from this? You know, like maybe... Like on Instagram, like the vibe is a lot different. You know, it's like, yeah. it's it's not so verbose. Yeah. It's just like pictures. And I like play my guitar a lot on yeah. it and just post videos of myself playing guitar with me saying absolutely nothing. And my sister is on there and mm-hmm. I have, you know, old high school friends. So it's like, I keep myself a little bit more in check and I, yeah. I'm less likely to, um, you know, say, not, you know, I won't say things that I wouldn't normally say, you know, yeah. and we're on Twitter, it's kind of like no one knows me on Twitter. It's the wild and west. I'm, yeah, and I'm like, 
let's you know let's see what kind of crap i can get in, get into and it's not healthy it's i'll just say it's not yeah. healthy for me and it's good for me to say that out loud yeah it is kind of wild what happens when you have a certain number of characters and total anonymity it's it is just a very like we're now we're now conditioning ourselves as a society as a society to do that and i was talking to you about kind of like the ability to rebel like sometimes when i go into waiting rooms or something like that I'm in waiting rooms very often, but like I'll look around and there'll be people all on their phones and I'll be like, I'm not going to do that. Mm. Like I'm going to like, like somehow that's that, like that's still where my mind goes of like, look at all these people on their phones. (laughs) I'm not on my phone. Then I just sit there like, well, I had a little, I had a little act of rebellion the the other week where I went on a walk and then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to take my phone with me on this walk. And it's like, it's amazing how, hard of a knee-jerk reaction i had against that at first yeah you know what i mean where i'm just like wait a minute isn't this something that i've been doing for the majority of my life i've not had a phone you know i've not had this thing Mm -hmm. that i needed to have with me i'm just like where's that resistance coming from you know for me it's difficult for like walks or even just like going from i i I used to be very difficult when i was going from my bedroom to my kitchen to like get a drink of water i would play a podcast Mm-hmm. For the thirty oh, seconds, yeah, yeah. To I do. Walk there, I still walk do back, that. and then I'd pause it, and then I'd watch the show. But to go on a walk and be like, "Oh wait, I don't need to have like headphones in." I'm like, "Yeah, but I really kind of want to listen to that." And then I'm like, right. "Why is that?" Right. Like, like what? What is what is my obsession with not being in silence? And like, I constantly need to have something happening in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then it blows my mind that there's like we're we're in a, a generation now that we're going to have like per, we have professionals now we have professionals now like doing professional jobs like mm-hmm. tweeting. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Like and not like even regardless of politics, like from from any scope of like yeah. professionalism, like, like marketing. There's there type. there's there's some t- like college professor like doing some like some tests or like you know like are you going to pass the board and they're over there tweeting like or like Instagram and like. Oh hey, Justin! I like, yeah, that's a nice guitar riff, Justin. She's <laughs> like, like, that's insane. <laughs> the ability—I will say—it is interesting at Twitter, though. Of you actually have a chance of speaking to somebody. Like you actually have a somewhat, like at least a, at least a statistical chance of having this person that you're you're tweeting to respond back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The connection. Yeah. Yeah. Like the I've, reach that you have with that versus, yeah. I've got one like that I was really proud of. Uh, <laughs> Ola England, he's a he's a guitar manufacturer and like a famous mm-hmm. heavy metal musician. And I posted something about his guitar company because I own one of his guitars, and he liked it. And I was like, yes, Ola <laughs> England liked my tweet. You know, it's like, am I really yeah. living for that moment? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Moment. I've had I've had All two two Reddit posts that made the front page before. Did that you was, really? Yeah. What's your karma at right now? I don't remember. I don't. I haven't. Uh, I can't even. I help. haven't. I've abandoned my old. I don't have an account anymore. I've I've abandoned it. But if you look up, well, I can look it up right now. Let's see. Um, see, the thing is, like, I don't even have enough karma to post on some of the subreddits because they have karma limits. Right. It's you ridiculous. About, it's Debbie ridiculous. Jones? No idea. What it's like, do, it's right? like I have no you can't idea. post on certain subreddits unless you've posted enough in other things to have like you need at least 5,000 karma to even be able to post something on this. What is mm-hmm. a karma? It's not a karma. Okay. It's karma. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's just like the oh. it's, it's the it's the upvoted and downvoted. Oh. But karma. Sure. Uh, we're looking at uh, 16,600. Son of a gun. <laughs> Whoa. I think the most I've gotten was like 80. Yeah. And it was because it was my cat. But he's cute. Well, she's cute. Yeah. I posted a, I posted an, it's always sunny meme. And oh, then, yeah, I, you, I posted, you lazy. And then I posted it. And then I posted an article about when North Korea hacked, well, allegedly. Uh, allegedly. North Korea Don't hacked the Sony us. thing. Well, which they didn't. It was an article pretty much saying that, like, no, that's probably not that what happened. That was a while ago. That was like 2000. 2000- Yep. 16 maybe i was back in his drinking days <laughs> yes right. it was Definitely. all of this was <laughs> i haven't been i haven't been on i don't even remember how to log into my old account um, i mean you you click log in i don't remember the credentials oh, okay that's different um, that's a different thing i don't remember how to well no you know how to you know how to log into it you just don't remember how the to would also involve typing in the password time. 
No, that's not how to. I'm still yeah, thinking about my I would not include intro. I would. I. I think. I think there's. I think both of us you can be right about that. Do, but. So you're all right. That that would be like I remember how to log I into MySpace. I just can't log into it. Typing so in your anyway, password involves yeah. being is involving the how to. I don't think that necessarily is included. Mm. Well, we'll let the viewers decide. Here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're gonna agree with Dan and his fucking <laughs> his semantics over here, or you know, I saw what, 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 are, what are your thoughts on that? I have no idea what on you're what? even arguing about. Can anymore? you know how to do something? Like, can I know how to log? I know how to log into my MySpace. I just can't because I don't know the password or oh. the or the email address. Or would you say I don't know how to log into my MySpace because Does I don't? Does the know how, how to, do. to also involve having to know your password? Yes, I think because I know the necessary truthfully. steps. I just don't know the information. Hmm. Given that I know Doug well enough to know that he does know the steps to log into something, hearing him say, I don't know how to get into it, I assumed he meant he did not know the credentials anymore. That doesn't answer the question. There's context I know, right? Involved. Don't try to kiss his ass. <laughs> well, if I didn't know you and you said, I don't know how, I probably would explain to you how one logs into You something. go to the website first. Sorry, the World Wide Web. <laughs> I saw a tip recently in a group that I'm Maybe in where they were saying, <laughs> if you're trying to focus better to get a watch. So I did because they were like, how mm. often do you go to check the time a good and point. then get right. distracted by no. all the notifications on your phone? And then I went, I don't think mm. ever. Holy crap. Rarely. That happens to me at, constantly. At so you got a smart watch to solve. That. <laughs> but I didn't hook up any social media to it. I just wanted the steps. I've thought about getting a watch just as a fashion accessory. You know, they look cool. Yeah, watches are cool. Yeah. They're cool. They're I cool like that, pieces. Justin. Bling bling. That Let me get a nice. zoom in on that. There, yeah. Do you match them to your outfits, or do well, you? Well, no. This is just. Uh, <laughs> I was just this curious. This is just if one you had I more had. Well, I kind of. Tr I tried. I I'm a hey, bit of a fashionista. Succeeded. Yeah. Do you have multiple watches? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. How many yeah. watches? Ooh. Three. All right. I, okay. I, was, yeah, I was like, oh, this is just yeah. like, yeah, 32. <laughs> so oh, I'm not that no, much of a fashion. It's just a watch fetish. Yeah. But I was going to say, like, I'm at, at work. I work in a time based, you know, they have mm. rate. And stuff. yeah, we probably should back off that. Actually, you bit. can eat that, Mike. <laughs> no, 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 we're doing good. That's yeah. fine. But, uh, <laughs> I got the levels. <laughs> I got the levels also. I'm always checking my watch at work. And I think I, you know, I agree. It does kind of help me stay focused. Cause it's just Isn't that like, such a weird thing though that you that we're okay for first off mm -hmm. that we're in a place that it's just like I have to remain focused at all times like that's such now if I had some like fine Italian leather bands it'd be different yeah you know but sure. just to look at the time and be like hey that I don't know I just don't feel like that's very it is kind of an annoying habit sometimes I do like think to myself like man how many times are you gonna look at your watch dude you know but uh i will i don't think it's necessarily like the, the, the wa <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not the watch part i think it's more like the the idea that we live in a society that it's just like you have to make sure you're productive yeah right you're yeah. always productive like down to the down to the second um i think that's more where i was going not the watch itself like yeah. if anything you're just getting i mean you know that you know how amazing it is that your arm can actually do that rotation mm -hmm. i think you're just appreciating god's work it is amazing it is it, like it is, that yeah. that is, is that is cool genuinely that amazing times. yeah it is pretty cool <laughs> 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 i'm like looking at debbie there wow yeah no but i mean Wild. that's that's it, it is one of those smaller things like there are a lot of like amazing there we're going all over the place with this you <laughs> yeah. know it's this is mechanics. Yeah. but th that is there, there are so many fascinating things with that or how amazingly robust and also sensitive and fragile human beings mm -hmm. are yeah like i thought about that a lot they'll, yeah. they'll draw your blood and be like all right well there's uh seven here's 17 different levels of things and if this one's slightly off you're dead and it's like 100 yeah. years ago we were like i don't know he looks kind of sick cut him open and let him bleed out a little right. bit that'll help him <laughs> leeches <laughs> leech him <laughs> yeah he's got too much blood in his body leeches yeah. are actually good though Yes, yes. Right. isn't that a proven them. thing? Right. Yes, really? but but they yeah, don't they use, them use them how some... they used to right. use them. It's but true. It's a, yeah. Yeah, they're not bloodletting anymore. So are maggots. But yes, because yes. they only eat dead tissue. They mm -hmm. don't eat live mm -hmm. tissue. Mm -hmm. So if you have like necrotic areas, I really like weird medical. I don't shows. know. I don't know why, but that just, that sounded gross. Necrotic. If they, if they just have necrotic. Like 
Well, there's root also words that. in there. That's what made me think of it. So. Oh. <laughs> no, like for leeches, if you have blood blisters in places where it's really dangerous, mm-hmm. leeches have antiseptic in their saliva. Whoa. So like, How big of a blood blister is dangerous? I, I, I well, genuinely mean that because I've seen like too. tiny little ones, but like how big is a how big is a dangerous blood blister? I mean, you had a hematoma in your head. <laughs> huh? You had a hematoma in your head. You tell me. Yeah. Okay. That's not a blood What's blister. What's a hematoma? Uh, a- an internal brain bleed. Okay. For some reason, I thought it's nematode. It's basically a blood blister. Which isn't a real thing. In your head. Okay. Yeah, but that's a that's a reach. I, I mean, I will give it to you, but that you're reaching. I just had to watch you guys argue about what how to means. So I think I win this one. <laughs> I need one. What? What? Oh, so before you answer the question, Justin, what do you think the location and size of a blood blister would have to be for it to be dangerous? Um, I, mm. I have some guesses. I feel like my, the small, my thought sorry. is like <laughs> maybe like at least the size of a quarter. Okay. And location, I mean, <laughs> like like on your. That's what I was going <laughs> to say. Like somewhere around the neck. I like. I don't know. I've had blood blisters before, like on my my hands and stuff from working and from you know rope burn, like tug of war in gym class. But uh, <laughs> well, anytime, never had a leech attached to it though. Did you? Yeah, I never. I yeah, never but thought anytime about... you have trauma to the body, if there's internal bleeding, it can cause not. You probably wouldn't call it a blood blister, okay, but that's see, basically now, what it is. Okay, see, now we're talking about semantics. Sure. <laughs> you yeah. always get in arguments about cool. semantics. Words, I don't words know. mean things. They do. <laughs> like, you can't, okay, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know like, all the like, doctors. You can't be like, oh, some paper words. cuts are really dangerous, especially when they chop your entire arm off, you know? like. Well, was it done by paper? Yeah, well, it was then a, it's it, a paper cut. Well, what really is paper, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> could a Fair guillotine point. technically be, could you write on it? Is that paper? I don't know. Me neither. I don't know. All I know is I've seen a medical show where they used a leech to drain a blood blister because they couldn't do it. Where was it? it? Was they could use a syringe? Yeah. I think it was on this an episode. This is 2023. I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, it was when I was watching an episode of Sex Sent Me to the ER. So you guess where it was. I don't know what that show is. Can you explain it to me? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will not. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, well, I, 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 I could see, actually, because there are a lot of major arteries in in your groin area to begin with. So I, I can see how that could. I still don't under. I, I just see, like, uh, have you seen... Uh, What's the Will Ferrell movie where he goes to the middle of the world? It's not that good of a movie. Journey to the Center of the Earth. Journey to the Center of the Earth. <laughs> where he goes it. to the middle of the world. <laughs> Adventure to the middle of the earth of the world. With Will Ferrell. <laughs> so it there's that, but he has like uh there's like this giant mosquito when he's on his back, and the mosquito's like the size of him, and he like loses blood, falls back, and there's just blood everywhere. I feel like yeah. that would be the ha- it'd have to be like <laughs> Well, it could like, be. Whoa! But like, that's a gnarly blood blister. You want to be careful because if you just pop it like with a needle, then you can cause whoa, more blood loss. Who says anything about loss, popping? Where like a leech. Who says anything about needles? Yeah. First off, everyone knows you. That would be everyone the other knows you put a piece of tape over it, and then this you put the needle. This isn't a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what he's talking about? Yes, I do. Yeah. Have you seen the videos where they have like the needle in the cow and it's and methane? No, oh no, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Anyways, so, um, worst city you've ever been to? Oh, now we're Grand gonna... Rapids. I haven't been to a ton. <laughs> oh come on, really? Eas- easily. You know, I I went through Detroit on my way to Windsor, and uh, probably Detroit probably didn't Windsor. seem like a place where I want to stop and hang out too much. When, when, when was Detroit. it? Detroit. When was it? Yeah. I love last, downtown last week. Detroit. Maybe seven years ago six oh, really? years ago we went we went there i to, lived out uh, there s- in detroit see. downtown detroit no but i used <laughs> to go to detroit let's see 31 30 yeah, i went to I a metal show at the masonic temple i liked it in there downtown yeah i really liked I the masonic too. temple yep. it was it's so like, I nice was there. <laughs> it was so nice Dude, that there. place is cool yeah. so yeah. cool. i like detroit so detroit's not your favorite well i can't really speak very well on it because I haven't I'm not very well traveled which is funny because I was talking to my Uber driver on the way here about travel but um, yeah I'm not very well traveled I've been to Florida I've been to Canada well I can tell you where the worst state was (laughs) 
Florida. <laughs> Hands down. Easily I like Florida. Florida. Yeah, Florida's hot. <laughs> Florida's, <laughs> Florida's okay to go there for like two, three days, five days if you're feeling real reckless, and then leaving. Yeah. I don't know that I'll ever go back. I don't want to be there. I got sunsick, and I... I swear to this day, I might have had like an appendix burst, and we were on <laughs> we were on family vacation. So my mom and dad are like, "Yeah, suck it up." Yeah, I, <laughs> rub some dirt in it. You're fine. I had appendicitis. That's what my parents did too. They were like, "So you survived it?" No. So eventually, I guess they did. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. well, like you didn't survive it. Because eventually, it, because eventually it was, I mean, it was my dad that found out because I was double over to, over in like pain like all day. Yeah. Did he have a blood blister? That's no. the first sign. I have a blood blister, Greg. Can you milk me? Um, no, my. But my dad did the thing where you you poke your your, your stomach, and then uh-huh. you, when if you when you apply pressure to it, and then when you take your finger away, if it hurts, that's how you know you have. A, hmm. How far do you almost, have to poke in? Not too far. Okay, I was going to be like, I feel like that's um, a bad experiment. Um, like, no, it's, yeah, I mean, that seems yeah. awful. Because can that do? He didn't like jab me, but you just, <laughs> hey, you, kid. Just, hey, you, just, you just apply a light pressure on where your appendix is. And yeah. if it hurts when you take your finger away, that's how you know. I that feel like it hurt when you push the finger on. Well, I was already in a lot of pain. So oh, if yeah. it hurts more, sure. then yeah. Um, yeah Doug, so Doug stop, stop screaming. So I got appendicitis <laughs> and now I got a scar there. So that's cool. Got my tonsils out. My abnoids out and my appendix. Interesting out. story. Got rid of all the dead weight. Interesting story. All did did you have your organs. tonsils removed? Mm, yes. Did I you have. have your tonsils yes. removed? Did you have your tonsils removed? Just said I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you just let me just go with the? So interesting. <laughs> Try thing. to keep up. Uh, <laughs> so there's probably going to be some doctor that doesn't listen this to this show episode. that's not going to be relevant. Do you to have the, tonsils? I actually spit mine out. What? Bit by bit. My mother did too. Is this another chi- baby thing? No, what? no, 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 no. This, like this, applesauce? No, 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 no. This, this was, this was, so growing up, uh, probably from like, I don't know, generally young to, I was still in Flagstaff, so maybe like 12, 13, I would spit up little pieces that looked like uh, uh, pencil erasers. I always wondered what they were, and I was just like, no, whatever. Pencil erasers. Pen, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I'm doing at night. Right. <laughs> um, All those memories you don't yeah. remember. You ch- chew on the chew on the eraser side of the pencil. I didn't chew on the erasers, but I, I did, did used to get, me and my friends in like first, second grade, would get the gel pens and then would <laughs> and suck them up. Why? <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> did you what? ever snort Why Smarties? Why that made my throat hurt? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, okay. I did that. But anyways, <laughs> so I spit out my, t- so then I went to, we are going to a doctor and stuff. And, you know, they're like, oh, do you have any surgeries? And I said, no. And they're like, well, you do because you don't have tonsils. And I was like, no, I actually, I spit them out. And she's like, no, you didn't. And then my mom was like, yeah, I did because I did too. And she's like, I've never heard of that happening. So, I mean, as far as I know, maybe my mom lied to me. I don't know. I I think that might be one of those, your pet went to the farm. But I don't have tonsils and I didn't have surgery. Wow. That is weird. You definitely don't have tonsils. I I don't know how you look. You've seen the sure. x-rays. You, I don't you can know. see them. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Like I <laughs> am not staring that deeply into your throat. Yeah. You can see them. Really? Yeah. It's I don't like think you can. When you open your mouth really wide, there's like little. No, yeah. Especially when they're like super engorged, like when you have strep throat. <laughs> That's a good word. It's too. true. Yeah. I've also had strep throat a bunch of times too. So that might've helped me spit them out. Speaking of medical anomalies. <laughs> Maybe that's how it works. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't so. Just shooting wild accusations. <laughs> I met a guy once who had this condition. You know, you can have your, be born with your uh, innards reversed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't I, know the name of my it. My friend TJ had that. Yeah. yeah, it's nuts. That's, uh, that is an interesting, like, uh, medical anomaly. Like yeah. your appendix is on the wrong Did he side? have his tonsils yeah, removed? Like your liver oh, would be it's, on it's your like the mirroring. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like flipped around. It gets real crazy with your kidneys. Cuz you have two of them. <laughs> Let me tell you, yeah. <laughs> this is Did about Did you know your tonsils can grow back? No, they can't. Yeah, they can. Really? Yeah, I had a neighbor who had her tonsils taken out twice. Wow. Yeah, she I had them taken out. I don't, didn't get her all back. I don't done believe the first you. Time. Yeah, that's a stupid thing to say. <laughs> Come on, Doug. What are you doing? Can you spit? Out <laughs> Doctor I mean, Google, please give us the answer. I mean, I, I mean, I feel like you can hack out lung, can't you? No, I don't think so. I think that's a I figure of that's speech. That's just a phrase. What that people say? Hacking up a lung. I can't even. I'm hacking out a horse right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like now horses, who's Justin? Playing with language. I um. 
I do, I guess. I, I've <laughs> Have you horse- ever ridden one? Yes, yeah. I was about to say. I've been Sorry, horse- I cut you off. horseback riding once. Uh, and I've been thinking, like, if I had the property, I would buy a horse. My so, mom, my I mean, mom loved horses. It sounds, it sounds like you like horses. I do like horses. Yeah. You, what's your favorite breed of horse? I don't know. El Teque. <laughs> what? An El Teque. El Teque. It's a type you, of horse. Is that the only type of horse you know? There's also a quarter An horse. Arabian. There's also a warm-blooded Dutch. I used to know that because there's a cold-blooded like, Dutch. That's literally what I told to the woman I was talking <laughs> right. to, and it's I was like, like well, my favorite's a cold-blooded. <laughs> the warm-blooded thing, yeah. German? I don't know. I would assume they're mammals. They're all warm-blooded. Do you know that? Do you know what the four distinguishing things that enable something to be considered a mammal? No. Well, warm blood. Um, let me see if I can figure this out. Um, He's not going to. Uh, um, it's really weird. Not not an exoskeleton. And so an okay, internal I, skeleton. I, I don't think things are created. No. To answer your question, no. <laughs> All right. Well, f***ing fine then. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> tell first me what they first off, there are, there are cold-blooded things that don't have exoskeletons that also have. All right. Yeah. Live birth. Yeah, you're right. Live birth, milk. There's a certain only a two-piece jaw. So where your jaw hooks, we only have we have this bone, and then it's connected to this bone. There's mm-hmm. only two things, and then we all mammals have three inner bone ears, mm. inner ear, ear bones. bones. Interesting uh-huh. bone ears. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those weird bone, bone ears. ears. <laughs> Did um, you know that platypus are in their own? They're not yeah. a mammal, nor are they a not mammal. They're their own thing. So are there animals that only have like two inner bone ears? <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Yes. And, and, and there's also otherwise they would be mammals probably who are they <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting lost tell me i have no idea okay i just know that the four and you know i could be wrong with that too <laughs> <laughs> i could be wrong no I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm not wrong uh you're always sure you're not wrong well i just i, I saw a video on um i think it started out with uh the platypus platypus yeah i was watching a show about a zoo and they had they were trying to breed platypus. Was it Zoo Makeover? No, it wasn't that one. <laughs> was it? <laughs> I, I just love making them laugh. <laughs> no, thank it was you, the thank you for zoo. appreciating that. <laughs> it was the Zoo Bronx. That's not as fun. I'm sorry. Anyway, so there was a platypus there. Continue. Yeah, they were trying to breed a platypus, so they were talking about the platypus. That's Isn't that how weird I know. that we do that. We what, just, we just get animals together and like, hey, can we breed these things? <laughs> it is, well, it they is test sad, them but... for genetics yeah. to make sure that they're putting genetically diverse. Yeah, but isn't all isn't all out. those things weird? I mean, yeah, but we've ruined the planet. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, like we have to intervene because we're the ones who screwed it up. So just if you were gonna remove one animal off, oh the planet, yeah, oh yeah, that's yeah. how this started. Yeah. What animal would it be? Better not be a platypus. I was no. just going to say, I was going to go for the low hanging fruit here and say <laughs> platypus, that worthless. They're no. a trash animal. <laughs> no, I, I, that's such a tough question. I, I get rid of pandas. I was just going to say, <laughs> no. I have a really unpopular opinion about this. <laughs> What's Look, pandas? They're, they're already like, they're already on their way out. They're exactly. the laziest <laughs> animals. Do you know they have to eat so much bamboo because... Bamboo's it a doesn't terrible have food. enough nutrition for I made that. this Such exact same question. point 38 episodes ago. You probably did. So and anyways, that and might have been hold on. Not everybody you're not letting them Everybody was hating oh, on I'm me sorry. for this. Yeah. It would probably have to be some, like, seagull, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's actually that's, a great answer. That's, I, think, that's I, my answer. I mean, I think it's yeah. a good seagull. answer in the sense of this. I think the, the environmental impact of that would be astronomical. But you know what? Would it though? The rats. That, oh, yes, they maybe. would. Would it? Oh, it, it would. It, it. They are the rats of the sky, though. And yeah. yeah. Well, so you know. have you ever been pooped on by a bird? Yes, it directly sucks, on it? my head. Me too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> in like that's sixth, that's seventh grade luck. or something like that. Huh? That's supposed to be good luck. Yeah, not when you're Is in it? seventh grade around yeah. other children. Huh. They don't yeah, tend to care. That's an interesting thing. It's a sign I would have never thought that. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's an odds thing. Got good luck, bro. Do you know I why don't. they call it raining cats and dogs? Why? Mm-mm. I don't know if this is true. <laughs> <laughs> from what? But no, from at least okay. Well, I do, I do know what this one is. You know why they they say waiting for the next shoot the the shoe to drop? Mm-hmm. Why? You do know why? No. <laughs> so when when people lived in like 
flats like on top of one another a lot and people would be at the end of their bed and kick off their shoe yeah like you could hear it up top so then you'd always be oh, waiting that's for interesting. the shoe to drop yeah, yeah cool mm-hmm. makes sense okay yeah the cool. cat the cats and the dogs things from what i heard it was because they would sleep in the hay roofs or something like that uh, and then when it would storm they they'd fall down. i don't oh. think that's true though that just sounds stupid they would fall like the rain would yeah. come it definitely sounds down. plausible oh. It, that I sounds mean, plausible, yeah. I mean, actually, I don't know if the dogs would sleep there. See, see, the thing is that not a lot of people know this. Dogs and cats used to actually be like this. <laughs> Besties for the rest. Yeah, it was, actually, it was actually a very socioeconomical thing to actually create a division within their ranks. Um, and that's kind of what's caused a lot of the issues that we face today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a part of that that's, that might actually like be, you know, who knows actually kind of true you know i don't think any the of that's division, true. the division between cats and dogs you know yeah because it's like dogs were domesticated kind of on purpose and cats just kind of like showed up you know they yeah weren't. you can't tame a cat what they weren't domesticated on purpose no were? no i was just re- i was just watching okay. a documentary about dogs this. or cats dogs cats were actually kind of domesticated on purpose mm. well i think the show you watched is wrong Maybe okay. they were talking <laughs> about. No, how, so, I like how so you can what? say anything you want and be like, "I could be wrong." <laughs> yeah, it's true. I love that. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, all of us should say that because, yeah, okay. A little so, disclaimer. So why am I wrong? Is, yeah. So, so not a medical. In the podcast. documentary I was watching, it's on Amazon Prime Video. If you want to watch it, it's called Dogs. Okay, that's good to know. It's not an original name. It's a but multiple it's to the point. episode miniseries, but they were uh, talking about how the best they can figure is the dogs as we know them today, which yeah. were also not descended from wolves. Wolves and dogs, what? they did have a common ancestor, but they weren't, they're totally different divisions of the family tree, mm, okay. which okay. most people, yeah. conventional wisdom for a long time was that, right. you know. That's what I've heard my entire life. Yeah. yeah. Apparently this is all wrong. Okay. So they had a common thought? ancestor, but then they, they both branched off. And the best they can figure is that this version of dogs that has become our modern day Mm -hmm. domestic dogs, they domesticated themselves. So they started spending time near people because there was Mm. food there and it was Mm -hmm. easier to get that food than to hunt. And then what started happening is that some of the dogs that were a lot less people averse got closer and closer and closer Mm -hmm. and became what we now know of as domestic dogs. I thought that's what happened with cats. Yeah, I feel like that's what probably something similar but right. the egyptians had a lot to do with what, yeah. but so what the I, dogs wanted us not the other way around yes. dogs really are man's best friend because there's two different sets of what we now know of as domestic dogs there's like domestic dogs and then there's wild dogs but they're not wolves so yeah, like, those painted dogs in like Africa, those are and a dango, yeah, and, and a dango. Australian, yeah, dango. Australian hyenas, wild dogs, African wild are, dogs, and there. hyenas are like raccoons, I think. Yeah, they're not really? quite they're not in dogs. the dog. Field. They're not so canine, yeah. right? My my, my question though is what mm-hmm. can what constitutes as domestication? Because it, it, I've never, I guess it would be weird to say you're self domesticated. Right. Usually, I would I would hear that in reference so, to people like as a uh, yeah a force being pushed upon. Yeah. Well, I think that's the problem is that we we that word came about because at a time when humans thought of themselves as being the people like we did everything. So we domesticated this species. And then it's like domestication isn't really a good word for it because it's not always an active process hmm. in that documentary, too. There's a really cool part where they have these foxes that they breed. In. God, foxes are so cute. They're so cute, but so. God, have you seen baby foxes? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, no. I, I like fennec foxes with the giant ears. Those are cool. Have you seen a so baby cute. one? It's ten times better. Uh, I'm not debating the whole baby aspect of this thing, but you know foxes you, are kind of. Have you weird. seen that little animal? I've seen it on Instagram. Like people have made a couple different posts about it. It looks like it has like a fox's face almost, and like a little miniature bear body. <laughs> A red Do you know panda? what I'm talking about? A red about? panda. No, I don't. I don't have Instagram. It's some kind of panda. It's some I don't kind of panda. think it's the Just red really panda. I think Do they stand up like this when they're scared? Yes, they, the red they panda. stand. It they like to stand panda. up. Yeah. But there's another. There's another thing similar to that. That's not a red panda. Have you ever seen that? Uh, have you ever seen the study of like the street dogs in like Moscow and like in in Istanbul? Can you and, imagine like, how tough they, a Russian dog well, is? Well, the thing is, no, because people actually treat their dog, their outside yeah. dogs, really, really well there. No. So they go around in these packs, and it's actually the like the cute dogs are the 
are the ones who like the breadwinners. Yes. Right. (laughs) So they go up to people and they, they know how to ride the trains and everything like that. Like it's, it's all really cool. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Docs have a crazy ability to learn. Yeah. Like, and when you were talking about how like the dogs, the more sociable ones would Mm -hmm. become closer to humans. That's just what made me think of that. I mean, it it makes sense though, because that's kind of how, right. It's, it's a need that's being met. Yeah. How do you, how well this dog knows how to meet that need? Well, and there, it's handed down genetically through the generations too, because the, the fox study that was being done, so they were taking, they took foxes that were very averse to people from like early on, like, like little foxes that would, that would behave like really oh, weird so and cute. skittish around yeah. humans. Oh, and they fox. would breed those together and keep them in one area. And then they had other ones that were, fearful but like would freeze when they were around you so they weren't trying to bite you they weren't like their their fear response was more freezing Flight than fight right so they took those and started breeding them together and then they kept going down and generations later and they they treated them both the same they weren't allowed to like go in and cuddle them and stuff they would just go in and what they would do is walk up to the pen and see how the fox reacted generations later and they're like 10 or 12 generations away from the onset of the study has been going on for decades and now the descendants of those freeze foxes love people they behave exactly like a domestic dog does and the other ones behave like a feral wolf and it's they've ruled out environment and nature so it has to be or yeah nurture Mm -hmm, they've ruled out nurture so it has to be genetics that's being coded into the dna to be more and more Hmm. who do you think funded that study i think it was in eastern europe the u.s military (laughs) it might have been i don't know i know it it, like i say that half jokingly but i am always curious of like you hear this like really Mm -hmm. crazy studies and you're like what (laughs) Well, I, mean, I think it's- that that is interesting. Even just to be able to prove the ability of um, like ancestral behavior, yeah, coded in genetics, I think is a very interesting. They've I thought you said you didn't it. like science. Well, I like behavioral science. I guess I should say, I'm not so much for the hard sciences, but behavioral science is really interesting to me because yeah, like soci- sociology, yeah, and, and the behavior of humans and stuff, so, yeah. Like Rat Park. I love that study. It's so interesting. Yeah, it is really interesting. Do you know Rat Park? You do. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. You do. You do. It was the addiction study that they did. That basically said if you just put these cocaine. rats. Yeah, but mm-hmm. if they just had enough other things to do, they wouldn't choose the cocaine. Yeah. And, it was and a- in, in a supporting environment in a community with other little happy rats, and they would all rat together. Hmm. Yeah. I'd choose the cocaine. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, the study argues you wouldn't. Because that was what was interesting about it. That's why I don't believe in science. (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) Sure. Uh, Well, hey, we're talking about recovery, right? (laughs) (laughs) Great segue. If you've made it this far, it's because, (laughs) yeah, the reason we invited Justin is because Justin Justin and I were in Guiding Light together. We were both in the... Uh, rehab together yeah as was daniel was he were you in or were you working here when justin came in i think i was partly in when you were here right yeah yeah you were here was i in the program or working yeah you here? were yeah you okay. were you were or both i, you I were think on your <laughs> way into working a here. staff yeah working okay. position okay i think one of my favorite memories i think it was my birthday and uh, you invited oh, me God. to sit on your lap and <laughs> like maybe sing me happy birthday. And I remember it choked me up because like I didn't have a lot of like brotherly affection growing mm, up. Yeah. And I remember one of the other guys was like, he saw, he saw my eyes, my tears welling up. And it's like, I didn't know what was going on. I was yeah. like, like, isn't that funny Thanks, though? man. How? Like it was, there was no, what are the kids say now? No, whatever. It wasn't. It, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, it, I no homo. That's just the word we're looking for. No yeah. homo. I, I was filtering myself, but <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy. It was that. very nice. Yeah. It was like probably one of my best memories of having you know interactions. Like someone is making me feel welcome, and that's that's what I was a big 
thing that was missing in my life, yeah. as we all know. You know, being being cornered in addiction, it's very uh, yeah, very isolation. What am I trying to say? Yeah, a lot of no, isolation. You know, a lot of isolation. Yeah. It's yeah. driven by the disconnection. Yeah. And according to that rat study, all you needed was a Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah, right. And other rats that want to be in that Ferris wheel. Yep. <clears throat> but continue. We were, Doug, you, you seem to have a narrative you were going to run off of right there. No. Yeah. No, you kind of really. I see what you're saying. It's, it is kind of nice to just let the conversation flow. When you, It seems like when you try to steer a certain way with. I was just with thinking. The, with the, the very subject matter. Uh, I was just thinking it's like. You hit a wall. Who is uh, like? I'm just thinking if somebody's listening to this with absolutely no context, it's like, uh, it's like, what, what is your tangential connection to us? Yeah, sometimes or whatever. Right. But I don't think of it. I mean, personally, yeah. I, sometimes I'll in recovery, what, there's not a reason. Okay, you just got to let it go. I'll tell you what, nobody cares less than I do about that. <laughs> but you know, All right? Yeah, yeah. I was here for six months here, and then four months, three months, I think, out in Iron House. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a great experience, you know. Um, kind of, you know, I had a, a little bit of a turbulent time leaving the program, but it, you know, in hindsight, I mean, I guess my biggest takeaway that I learned, you know, being at Guiding Light was I need connection to yeah, other right. people. I need connection to recovery because even even in my time here, I was still a little bit like. Man, we're going to a lot of meetings, man. <laughs> like I don't, I can, you know, I don't need all this. But yeah. uh, I'm glad that that we went to so many meetings because it was really important. It was kind of like a training process, yeah. you know. Like I need to be connected to people. It was really interesting too because me and you have run into each other randomly, like more than a few times. Yeah, I think. around town. Yeah, just like randomly walking, be like, oh no. Hey, what's up, man? And it was yeah. just like it was. It's, it's always nice to kind of run into people like that, especially with, especially just being in recovery. It, there's never a guarantee that we're going to see somebody in their best shape. Uh, so to be able to just kind of run into you and be like, "Oh no, I'm doing good, man." It's like, right? It's yeah. awesome, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like, it is cool. That's it's it's oh, really sure. easy. You're still for, doing this, too. Yeah. 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 It's easy for everybody to kind of go off on their own ways, and and especially when we talk about connection. I remember running into a few times, and I think I saw you at a meeting once, and it was just like, no, I think I kind of like, I want to make sure I. I stay connected and I was like, heck yeah. Yeah. That is, I, I think that's a human need too. Yeah. I think as people in, well, not, we're sp- all just rats in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great song. It is a pretty is good it a song. song? Smashing puppies. Yeah. I think so. Oh, that's it's right. Like yeah. Smashing puppies. Right in the cage. Yeah. Right in yeah. the cage. Yeah. Yeah. cage. Yeah. I was thinking <laughs> like you guys do yeah. this 24 seven. This is all your career. Yep, right? Yeah. It never this, ends. This podcast You're, is, yep. this podcast <laughs> is. So, <laughs> listen, I was, I was making the mental connection. That's why all you guys want to do is goof around and talk about anything but recoveries. Cause you just this live is possible. 20, yeah, 24 I seven. Mean, so you just yeah. want to have fun. And I, I think that's, that's good. It's really hard to get a that's date good. when I'm carrying this mic around all the time. And people, people are just like, like, hello, and what are you doing? You're like, I'm, I'm, I'm on a 24 hour podcast. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that almost went over my head, but yeah, 24 seven. That's 24 hour podcast. <laughs> I mean, um, oh yeah, that. yeah. That would be a great some... skit though too. We really need to start making these shorts. Hey man, get the get <laughs> they those have get the scripts desires going. Desires to be YouTube stars. No, 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 I no, 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 no. We do not want to be YouTube stars. We want to. <laughs> Doug wants to produce me, and we're gonna have. I just want to make anything that's two cats or that's fictional. It's uh, I don't get enough of that. What, what was our, it, was, it was gonna be like Cat Dad's production? Because me and Ryan have three <laughs> between us both. We have three cats. So cat, so Cat Dad's <laughs> cat production. Dad's production. Yeah, three cats, right. two dads. Production. <laughs> Grand Rapids, mm-hmm. <laughs> unlimited, limited, limited. <laughs> Nice. Comedy sketches. Did you turn off his mic yet? <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll, I'll I would keep, never. Do I'll that. keep talking. Yeah. I'll Anyways, never, it's not going to matter. You might as well pick that. it up. <laughs> yeah. Justin said one of the most important things to me that anybody said when I was here, and it's, and I'm serious because it still it still sticks with me. I told you this story before, Justin, but like, um, when I first got to Guiding Light, I was very convinced that like I I was on some level that that everybody else here wasn't when it comes when it came to knowing about recovery and whatnot so 
I went, so it was my first night here and I went to a meeting with the guys and I, so I went to a meeting and I shared for like way, 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 way too long. And then one of the guys afterwards pulled me aside and he was like, yeah, you should generally keep it like five minutes or whatever. Cause I just had hops. I just had, uh, yeah, that's too long. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, uh, because I just, I just, yeah, I just thought I had so much important things to say. You yep. know what I mean? And uh, and then I eventually I got accepted. So this was like, you know, a couple of weeks later and I was in this very room, uh, when we were having a, our 12 and 12 meeting or whatever. And then I shared something and then Justin, Justin said, Doug, you know, there's no, there's no easy way to say this. So I'm just going to go out and say it. You got to keep your share shorter. And then, <laughs> and I was like, and then I was like, I was like, Oh, I, like I, I didn't take offense to it or anything like that. Yeah. I it, I took it to like, Oh, okay. Thank you for telling me that because right. I've kind of tried to take that to heart ever, yeah. ever since then that like what I have to say is really not that important. You know what I mean? In the well, of things. So it's very important. I'm serious. It's a very important early lesson that I got because of you. So I don't know. Yeah. Was that at one of the, the round tables <laughs> like, yeah, in here? I feel yeah. like I remember that. Huh. You might've been there. I don't know. You weren't in the program, but you might've been there for some reason. At the same token, I, I oh could, no, because I I yeah I would have been up front. I yeah, you were working there. here. Yeah, you were the first person I saw when I came here. Yeah, and he was like, "Look at this d bag." No, <laughs> no, I was I was happy that somebody was like smiling at me. You know, so that was good. Not like, oh, this is gonna be okay. This isn't gonna be hard. <laughs> then I met Brian and Steve. And that shattered that illusion yeah, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I remember I first met Brian and this is all inside baseball as, as we've said before, but, uh, Brian, the head of the recovery program at the time, who was very intimidating to me when I first met with him for, while I was being interviewed to get accepted in the program. And then I was like, well, God, that went, that didn't go well, but I know there's another life coach who I have to interview with. And this guy is probably going to be the guy with the long hair and the glasses. And he's going to tell me that I'm doing really good and hippie. stuff like that. And you got to have both sides, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was certain there was going to be another guy who was going to be really nice to me. Nope. It's Steve. <laughs> it's Steve Pratt. And he's like, also bald. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, I thought for sure there's going to be a good cop, bad cop thing going on. It was just no, bad, cop, bad cop, worse cop. Worse cop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yep. Oh, yeah. I thought we were going to do bad cop, bad cop. <laughs> No, because they were like the horrifying. Like, I don't know, like hard ass and harder. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> which is funny no though relief. because Brian was the softer of the two. Oh, he absolutely. was the softy. <laughs> absolutely. But everybody would meet with him first and then be like, "Okay, yeah. well, the next guy has to be the softy." It's like, no, no, no actually, you just met him. No. I just thought that's how rehab worked. I thought mm. there had to be somebody who's supposed to pat you on the back and tell you that you're doing yeah. good. Yeah, you know it's I mean? me, but you don't yeah. meet me until six months in. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's like even to the point of them doing that and Justin's comment was like, that is what an amazing place it is, though, is that like, that's what accountability and holding each other to a standard right. and, and being open and honest and yes. being vulnerable. Like all the stuff that we talk about, like that what, a, actual... what a perfect picture of that, of just being like, dude, wrap it up, man. Yep. Like yep. Yep. we're not here. For, I'm trying to get sober too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, the, you know, I... And also it's like the directness of that was the one thing that was the thing that sucked to me because it was actually Jeremy Anderson. who was the first one to say that to me. He was like, yeah, you generally got to keep it. I know. It he said it super nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. sure, whatever, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I know that what I have to say is really important. So, yeah. I'm not you know, really, listen. you should listen to me more. <laughs> uh, I, also, this is another insight into how much of a dick I was. I, I, I was sharing in that meeting. I was just going on and on. I looked over at like Avery and the other people and like yeah. Jimmy and stuff. And they're all like laughing because I thought that they were like amazed at how what I was saying was so insightful. You yeah. know what I mean? I know they were like, <laughs> they were laughing at me because I was being such a- You're like, shut yeah. up. I, yeah. They're like, oh, this guy started yesterday. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I wanted to chime in about guiding light is that like it, I've never matured more, I think, emotionally in my recovery mm. journey than after going through this program <laughs> because like, like you don't you don't necessarily get coddled here, you know. I mean, there's 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 good treatment, you know, for sure, and uh, it's but it's not, um, yeah. It's it was tough too. It was yeah. challenging. Yeah. 
I don't think love is supposed to always be fluffy. You right. know, like the I, I hate the term tough love because sometimes I don't know, it's just I love. Mean, like, every every rose has its thorn, you know? Yeah. Okay, Balance. well we're not doing cliches. <laughs> the world is a vampire. <laughs> it's just I don't know. And you know I that you do know the song. I do know the song, yeah. <laughs> You guys are ridiculous. But no, t- the idea of tough love is 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 kind of uh, stupid. Uh, nah. Missing the point. No. Anyways, it, th- th- those are two different things. Like love is supposed to be that thing already. Yeah. Like the idea of loving and loving somebody with by taking a stand for them and by yeah, like you can have all that within this concept of love. Like mm. yeah. I can love mm-hmm. like. The same way my mom loved me and by being like, you're like, mom, can I sleep on at least, can I sleep on the driveway? Like, no, like that's where I put my boundary. Like if you want, if you want this life, you have to want, you have to, you, that's your life, not my life. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be a part of that. <clears throat> we get here that same thing of <clears throat> like, oh, well, I know I said this thing, but like, it's a lot easier if I do it because I didn't know about this other thing. <clears throat> Jeez, man. Love just, isn't just, letting somebody just suck forever. No, like like a rose is beautiful, but you know when you when you clip it at the bottom, especially those long stem, there's thorns. But that doesn't make the rose any less beautiful. It kind of adds to the beauty of it because yeah. the really that is that is what it is. Though you have to be careful with this beautiful thing, just just like with recovery, it's a gorgeous thing, but there are hard times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wish that sometimes I wish that my mom would have been uh, not such mm. an enabler for me. Yeah, it's like, man, my my mom, you know, and she's my mom, so she can. For for her, it was like impossible to say no to me. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but uh, I, I sometimes think that maybe I would have spent a little less time in in my addiction, my alcoholism, if I would have. Maybe my mom would have just said, no, dude. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, like, it's, we we all kind of have, it took it took us what it took to get here. Yes. That's what I was thinking. It does, it takes what it takes, yeah. right? There's and, no yeah. speculating, hypothesizing about what could have been isn't necessarily yeah. profitable. <clears throat> but. It's hard. I think a lot of people, especially, I, I am not a mother, but I've talk to friends who are becoming we mothers. Know. I know. <laughs> well, I try to preface it because I, I can't speak on motherhood. Not one. Don't want to be. So I, like, we get it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We get it. Sorry. You threw me off. What, with my rose analogy that I went on for 30 seconds too long yeah, about? Probably. Um, we just have this conception rose. that like loving somebody is always taking care of them in the most enabling way. And mm-hmm. it's always telling them everything's going to be okay. And sometimes it's not going to be okay. No. And that's We're, love is telling them, no, get off your ass. Well, we yes. really swung the oh, pendulum because we went from fifties and sixties where you like beat your kids. Right. And right. then we went to like the, Bad eight, ass. the <laughs> <laughs> like the nineties, like the, you know, late eighties, eighties, nineties, two thousands, like helicopter parents where mm. it's just like this other side where it's like, yeah. there, there is this middle ground of like, don't hit your kids. Okay? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but also, and this is a thing too, of it is very difficult. I, Though I have a daughter, I don't get to experience the parenting aspect as much because, you know, her she has a great mother who does that. Um, and I give her a lot of credit for that because there is that level of, like, you have to let this person fail. Yeah. This, this little person fail. The same way of, like, and I tell people here all the time, like, I hope you fail while you're here. Like, do it here. Right. Because mm-hmm. this is the place to do right. it. Like, we, I, we had a house meeting today and... It got brought up like, oh, well, I don't like to get close to people when they first come in because I don't know how long they're going to be here. <laughs> and I'm like, well, first off, like, don't live out of fact or whatever. But also, like, who can, like go into this situation willing to have your heart broken because yeah. that's what life is. That, that is that is literally what life is. Yeah. Yeah. You can't protect yourself from pain. And also forever. don't don't rob somebody else of the opportunity like the same. Like, I don't remember sitting. Have you sitting on my lap? And sitting <laughs> after so like Maybe it was all in my head. <laughs> but like, like, I doubt that. I believe those, your it's story. It's definitely something I would do. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 those pieces of connection of just like, and I think I, I found that here too, because the same way of, I felt very alone and I found, you know, through my drug friends and that stuff. But I, I came here and I was like, oh, um, like, that's what. And you know what? We we have lost people. Doug, I mean, we've all lost people. We've, and yeah. 
it's that same thing of like, yeah, but I would rather I would rather play the game and lose than never play at all. Yeah. Like the same thing of I, I'm if I'm ever going to have a if anyone's going to have a significant other in their life, like you have to play with your heart. Like you you don't have an option. Mm-hmm. You can have an option, but it's still going to be miserable. Yeah. Like I would rather like I had a relationship end, but and I but at least I was like at least I played. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. at least I was honest about where I was at. And for the same thing of like, don't, don't go into this life of, yeah, dude, recovery, like the whole saying that you're, they, you get an early recovery and they'll say, get a suit one for it's, you're going to be going to a lot of weddings and you're going to be going to a lot of funerals. And like, unfortunately that's true. It's, it's, you're, you're either going to, it's to go to the funerals or you're going to be buried in it. Is that what they say? That's the saying. Yeah. Oh, do you have a suit? I have several suits. Do you really? So I was going to say you should have different suits. I haven't. Ha- I don't have a single suit. Okay. I don't buy things. So I, uh, I do have. These aren't a... going to fit in a suit, bud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when the county took over the building, yeah, um, you remember that? I was there explicitly. <laughs> um, well, they God, were going to. That was fun. Well, so they. Uh, so we had to get everything out of the clothing closet. Mm-hmm. So. It went to Doug's closet. <laughs> I, t- I took like 10 different pairs of suits out of there. Dang, bro. I don't know we had that many suits that would fit you. Well, then most of them don't, but I can get them tailored, you know. You most have them, them for how long? Are they tailored yet? No, but you know, I could So you do don't it. have a suit. I do have a suit. <laughs> I mean, He's I have I, a, little, a bunch of stolen suits. It's like suits. a lending library. <laughs> I have, suit. I also have like an actual suit that fits me. But I, yeah. I would really, I really want a suit. I just have yet to, maybe for you. Maybe it used to be, it used to be my dad's. It's really yeah, nice. I yeah, got it. Suit. I got it. If, if, are you going to wear if, a suit to my wedding? Well, if it's that type of, if you're expecting people to do that, then yes, I will. Sure. I mean, am I going to be the only one in a suit? Because if that's Probably the case, not. then I don't want to, I, I you like know what I might be. I like wearing I would like to be that. You, I was going to say, yeah. you would like to be the only one in no, a suit. No, Doug's going to wear a it's, suit. It's not. The day is no. not about me. I would not. I would not do that to you. No, buddy. suits are cool, though. They do. I, I don't like I don't like wearing them. Yeah, I wouldn't wear them if I was the only one doing it. But if, if you're supposed to wear them, yeah. I like yeah. dressing up like that. I'd like to be I tailored. I hope and people fit and, dress up for my wedding. Well, you have to let them know that. It really depends on what type of food's being served, because that kind of gauges like the class. I picked out my food. <laughs> Huh? We picked out. Our oh food. yeah, how'd that go? Is it salmon? No. It's is it <laughs> it's a salmon, salmon food truck? <laughs> Actually, it's a. It's like no. You get to pick out. Is it your ribs? Fish? No. Good. We thought about it. We I I was about like barbecue. I feel like I feel like that, but it's no. dangerous. I hate we ribs. Out, so I'm planning my wedding. Inside we know. Thanks. <laughs> no, but they're all talking about it. Just yeah. So we picked out. We haven't actually deposited. So if you're listening to this, hello, Bigfoot Burger Co. That's who we're going with. So we're going to have bleep that out unless they pay it. Pay us. Okay. Burger. I had not (laughs) heard of them. Yeah. It's a food truck. Okay. They're at food truck Fridays, I think. And then we're going to have two dessert trucks. Nice. That's, that's on brand for you guys. Yeah. We're going to have a food truck rally at our wedding. That's pretty dope. I'm very excited. Yeah. Are you going to have slip and slides? No, there's not enough green. Can you bring it up to Josh? (laughs) <laughs> he'll listen so he, you just can ask him yourself Josh, <laughs> just one just for me <laughs> you want to slip we can slip put a slide, slip and slide in but the... i don't want to slip and slide. okay well so weird okay so um <laughs> yeah this is way over <laughs> way over time yeah way um, over and completely unnecessary information to most people that's okay <laughs> He's got this random dude in a yellow shirt. <laughs> it is a nice shirt, though. I don't know what's on You're the shirt. You're not random. Yeah, what is that? What what's, are those what's on it? Oh, Squids? pineapples. Pineapples. Uh, nice. My favorite fruit. Nice. Your do you know that? It's, do you know okay. that's actually oh, that's a vegetable? Like, is it? It's not. <laughs> I was. Kidding. I like, think what? he's lying to you. It grows on a tree. Gas it's lighter. definitely. I have no idea. A fruit. It doesn't have two cochlear ear. Uh, thing bone so <laughs> doesn't have two cochlear ear implants. It's that's not true. Cold blooded and has live children. No, yeah. Um, All right. Thank you so much yeah. for thank you for like, being here. Like, I got to doom scroll this Twitter <laughs> real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do some doom scrolling. Uh, yeah, thank you. It was great to be be on. Yeah, man. Thank you for. I don't. I don't know how. Did you just text Thanks them for like today? Putting up with us. Uh, 
no, I I asked him to to come on uh, a week ago, and then I asked Debbie to reach out to him see if he could make it happen. It wasn't going to happen, but then we were then, able to and, make it but work. But now and we're here. Then yeah. it did work. That's zero prep work. Yeah, that's. I, I definitely thought about things I wanted to talk about. Cool. Did, did we cover any of them? them? Not really. <laughs> hey, if if anybody want listening wants to be on the podcast, <laughs> I'd be down to like email me email me at Doug at guidinglightworks.org. Yeah, I'm actually being serious. So yeah, yeah. No, it, it'd be it'd be fun. It's it's always nice to. It's, yeah, it's always crazy. Nice, it's always better. nice to run into. You. Yeah, it's been cool. It's been good. Casual is good. It is good to yeah. catch up. Do you want to do our outro? Yeah. Thanks for listening, <laughs> watching, being here. If you want to know more about what Guiding Light does, guidinglightworks.org. What? <laughs> I just was just like, thank you just for like checking in and like zooming in with us. Yes, like, I'm just super excited. God. I'm just super excited. If you want to like press subscribe, sub- uh, subscribe. <laughs> thank you. It's just chef's kiss. Thank you for listening. Right. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Peace.